Well, I think that <clears throat> since we have a clock on the wall in the office and we're meeting in the office, that so we could go by the, <clears throat> the clock on the wall. And if the internet needs to catch up with us. Recording then... in progress. Yeah. All right. So it's 6.15 by the town office clock. And um, I welcome to the December 27th uh, select board meeting of the town of Rochester. And I'd like to first start by confirming that we've posted the agenda in three places and on the website and emailed to interested parties. And so we can go ahead um, with this meeting and we will have a, a space for um, public comment at the end of the meeting, which will limit to five minutes per speaker on topic. And um, starting with the minutes from the prior meeting. And I scanned them and did not see any changes I thought to make. Did you guys, what do you think? We read them. You yep, read, read them. So I'd move to approve. A second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, we got, got those. And um, right on to the new business, we've got the letter to sign responding to the auditors findings. Do you want to speak to anything in particular that they they recommended for us this year? Um, it's pretty basic. Pretty um, basic, just more yeah. and more details. It's just like yeah. four items. Yeah. Yep, and you know, like um, recommending that we establish a formal capital asset policy, um, which is um, something we've been talking about anyway, so we're kind of in the same tune with that. Um, we're also recommending that, uh, that we consult with an attorney to clarify the legally permitted uses of the funds maintained by the trustees of public funds, um, assets that may be used for the benefit, the benefit of the town should be recorded separately from those funds whose is, use is restricted to specific individuals, private organizations, or other go governmental units. Um, so that makes sense. And I believe the trustees have created like a draft copy. So it's something that we might be able to build off of. Mm -hmm. Also something that was in the works, yep. yep. <clears throat> also, I'm recommending that we expand our procurement policy to include the use of purchase orders. And I guess we would need to um, set the threshold, which we were talking in the office about that the other day, thinking 5,000. I, yeah, I wrote a letter to Nathan to ask at what point, at what monetary amount does an item become an asset because I think it kind of goes with the next finding, which um, finding the physical inventory of assets, yeah. Yeah. which we have done occasionally in the past. That the he recommends that the town periodically complete a physical inventory of its equipment, which I know we did a pretty thorough one when we closed the uh, constable's office to be sure of what we had and didn't have that. <clears throat> all right. So um, all right, I guess I would move to um, sign this letter recognizing and responding to the auditor's requests. We will take every item under consideration is basically what our response will yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree favor. with that. Yep. I second, aye. All right, in favor, aye, aye. okay. Right. You guys are signing that on. Um, do we have Joan online tonight or no? We yes, do. We do. Welcome, Joan. What have you got for us? Uh, I don't really have anything to report today. Yeah. Well, thank you for showing up to report that. <laughs> I guess it's not too hard when you just have to walk in the other room and turn on the computer. <laughs> oh, it was already on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, we're still awaiting the um, monies coming back from FEMA, and I guess it's pretty understandable that no action has been happening this last week or so for that. Did you get in touch with uh, uh, 
What's her name? Barb today? Yes. Yeah. We had a long phone conversation and she's emailed me a couple of more times with some more questions. So uh, uh, I'll be continuing to work with her tomorrow on that. Okay. And just so you know, I'm, with, with regards to FEMA, I'm still working on paperwork for them because they've come back to me with a bunch of questions about what I've of course. read. So that goes on. Yep. But the... Um... The monies that we are expecting from them, you'd believe that we'd expect that before the beginning of the next um, budget year and um, July 1st. You're on mute, John. Yes, no, maybe so. She's still on mute. <laughs> Have her audio on. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you, did well, you hear that? I, did you hear that I, question? I yeah, I heard the question. <laughs> I don't have to offer. I just don't know. The whole thing has you been so know. unpredictable, and everything you can't I count there, on. Them. We're not really there. Um, okay. And and depending upon who I'm talking to at the state, some people say, "Oh, you know, this should happen really fast. Now we've got all of your information, etc." So I say, and then I hear from somebody else, oh no, uh, this still has to go back to FEMA and that could be months. So I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I don't have any reliable information. All right, yeah. Okay. Thank you for dealing with that um, persistent um, pressure. Yeah. All right, um, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year and happy birthday to us. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, Tony, thanks for coming out on an icy night. What's up with the library? Well, let's see. We're going to have uh, still doing sports pickup and uh, browsing inside by appointment. If you want to call uh, the library, they'll let you in usually. And once again, I'd say that uh, the best thing to do is to check the Herald because that gives you the updates that you can see Thank and remember. Uh, I have some other comments. Shall I wait till the end of this or do it now? Well, are they related to the library? Yes. Yeah, then it's talk it to us. Okay. Um, the library trustees need to schedule a meeting with you to discuss and resolve some issues between the select board and the library trustees. We hope to avoid surprises like the petition for our budget. We all have better things to do than collect unnecessary signatures. In short, the five duly elected trustees believe that the votes, that the voters expect us to preserve and maintain a working library, which includes budgeting for it. There are other issues to clarify as well. Maybe we could do this at one of your regularly warm meetings or a special meeting if you prefer. Let's set it up soon. I'll be glad to work on this and I will send you maybe some information to give you some. All right. That'd be good to know, know what the questions are before the meeting. So we right. We've think discussed about it. some of them already, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I think they need to be really addressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put it on our next agenda. Yeah. Uh, do we have, we got to affirm the budget next agenda, I think, right? Right. But so that shouldn't I, take, take too much take to do that. To do that. No. All this discussion okay. would not have any impact on that. Wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, shouldn't. No, it shouldn't have any. Yeah, all we really okay. got to do for that is okay. Right? Yeah, would they be willing to join us in the next select board meeting? Well, yeah. I'd certainly try to get yep. most of them here. Yeah. Why, don't we, why don't we start with that? That, that is okay. when? The next one. January 10th. January 10th. Oh, yeah. We can start a whole new Google down there. I know, I'm going to. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank Great. you. <laughs> Yeah, there just shouldn't be things like this This petition. We should have known about this way before if it was it's, even it's necessary. A, it's like an appropriation. Um, it's a rule. It's a that rule. The that, that, that's a policy that the Where do you find the rule? Um, 
it's new. So it was a it it came into um, in 2019. Yeah, we were certainly never told. Uh, and we got the piece. Of well, paper. that's why I that's why I sent a letter to Kelly yeah. so that you weren't surprised at the last minute when everything would have to come back in time. But this thing here, well, we can discuss this later. I don't need to take the time up tonight. But this social service appropriation policy is mm -hmm. complete bull. That has nothing to do with the library. We are not a social service outfit. We are part of the town. Elected by the well, and when it was put into an appropriation so people could consider it specifically instead of just having it be blurred in there. So people would, that's, that's what it fell under that guise of a, of a you know, an appropriation. Well, this doesn't make because the select board doesn't have any say in it. Is that part of the reason for that? I think mm -hmm. possibly. The, yeah. the budget process. Yeah because it's not part of our process. It's, it's not anything it's, that we have any jurisdiction over. Is that correct? It's it's supposed to go to the voters. The voters are the ones that determine whether they um, want to pass the budget, whether it be the appropriation of the library or the uh, of any of the other appropriations that we have out um, I think that's that we've more. had requests for. So if they've increased, <clears throat> the, the voters need to know somehow that it has increased maybe just a little or whatever, but it'd have to go to the voters to be decided. Yeah, well, it should happen in the town report, really, but uh, yeah. We had the same situation with the uh, White River Ambulance Service for many years, too, making them an appropriation so that people could see that alongside of the normal budget and take it all into consideration. When we did pull it out of the regular budget, and have it as an appropriation, that was our last in-person town meeting, um, there was uh, overwhelming support for the library. So the, the, what we had done supported the library and, and brought recognition to the library and told us that the, the voters did want to support the library. So um, that was to the library's advantage at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. I think it still is, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And things may change. I mean, the legislature goes um, to make the decision on the 5th, I think, of January to talk about what the new, you know, what we're going to be following and what uh, regulations will be for town meeting, the consent forms, appropriations. We may not need the signatures either. So we're just going to have to wait till that comes forth. Well, we'll discuss it again. All right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, in terms of the highway department, thank you guys for working on Christmas and Christmas mm -hmm. Eve and Indeed. Christmas night and day after. All day Christmas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now we're um, there. So the job. Yep. And um, as far as uh, utilities, we don't have Terry here tonight, but my toilet worked the last time I tried it, so I guess it's um, we're um, okay. But that is, um, do we have Jeff here speaking on? The... No. Nope. I think everybody's kind of taking it a little easy on over the Christmas. <clears throat> um, basically, that brings us down to the opportunity for any other public comment on the meeting. If there's anyone that has something they would like to say, and Dave. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, this does about snow removal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, have, I don't have much room in front of the hardware, but I've been inheriting snow from my neighbors, which is uh, basically a town contractor uh, guy doing it. And mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I, I'm capable of taking care of my own snow or even other people's, but um, I really don't have the room there. And it's not fair to put the snow in front of my store when their store is clean. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Just, wondering what we can do. It's been an ongoing issue, kind of. Um, I've been kind of doing it myself. But it's the first time I've been to the town. Mm -hmm. I got pictures, but I don't really need no, to No, I see. know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's done with a loader, uh, a tractor of some sort. Mm -hmm. It's not a plow, so you can know it's not mm -hmm. me doing it. Um, uh, but I just, I, I try to keep up with it now because the, the hardware in the, the laundromat is, 
the cracking is really necessary in the winter time. It's more and more and more all the time. Plus, there's a storm drain right yeah, there. Yeah, the storm drain is yeah. invisible. Yeah, uh, uh, hazard. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Macy, my snow is only a fraction of what I get when mm -hmm. when my neighbors drive their snow. Mm -hmm. They 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 do three tires when I do. Yeah. <laughs> So I just wonder if we could maybe give them a little word. Say, uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's all. And, you know, yeah. I took yeah. care of it this time. I did it last year too, but yeah, uh, I don't have any room. <laughs> and so that's all. I guess sounds like a so. John issue. Yeah. Uh, they don't. Who do they have anybody plowing their snow? The other places there, the bookstore and the. I think Larry does it himself. Oh, Larry does. Do I it think himself. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got a plow. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't. This, this is not him putting that snow. In. No, yeah, no. Okay. It's a it's a tractor. Yeah. All right. I didn't actually see it done, but it's a tractor. Yep. Yeah. I have all a right. I have a comment on the plowing also. Yeah. Uh, that tractor that he's using is totally inappropriate. He's got a bucket on the front that is destroying the front of our house. And he's got some kind of a sweeper thing with a blade on it in the back. So he's pushing with a bucket and pulling with a blade. I mean, it's an absolute mess out front of our house. Yeah, a bunch of places. And I'm, I don't know who's going to be responsible other than us for cleaning it up. But I frankly don't, I would rather have him not even plow it. If he can't have appropriate equipment, could we check on the status of the new equipment? He said he was. Planning yeah, because that was part of why he wanted to get the commitment for right. the next contract, so we could afford to buy a, a better piece of equipment. Um, so, right, well, more yeah. more today, adequate piece of equipment. Today he came through with his pickup truck and the sander or salter or something driving all the way around the park. It may be okay down on Route 100, but I don't, and he's certainly got a wide enough swath now around the park that he can drive his pickup, but it's not really appropriate. That's not the job. Yeah, that's not the tool for it. Yeah. yeah. So we need to talk with them. Yeah. Will do. And as a matter of record, since we're on this subject, we say it about every year that uh, the snow that falls out of the sky and lands on your property belongs to you. <laughs> um, there's not, you're not supposed to be pushing the snow across the road and give it to your neighbors. Mm -hmm. So um, that is enforceable, it's in our ordinances. So um, anybody watching, if you're pushing it across the street, just to get rid of it, uh, that's a no-no. Maybe we should take that same approach with the sidewalks that if it goes by your property, you're responsible for it. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, um, anybody else want to speak up tonight? Uh, June, this is Robert. How are you? All right. Welcome. Hey, um, hey, I, I was delivering Christmas presents up on Hawk Mountain on Christmas Day, and uh, I don't know whether it's the town or someone else sanding up there, but whoever it is, whether it's the town or, or a private contractor, they're doing an excellent job. It was a dangerous day. And then secondly, I want to just compliment the road crew of Rochester. I think they're doing a great job. I know people have issues with the plowing and so on, but generally they're doing a, what I think is a pretty incredible uh, feat. Um, so with that said, I have uh, two questions and a recommendation. Um, I'd like to ask the two questions. Okay. Um, the first question is to um, a select board member, Patty Harvey, regarding her email account, which um, reflects onto the town. Um, what I'm asking is for Patty to uh, kind of explain the reasons why she made an exclusive email account 
being a select board member and specific to town business. So the question is, could Patty explain why she made that decision? Uh, I don't necessarily see why I need to. Um, basically, I have several email accounts. And in my simple mind, it was easier to have a separate account made. Okay, so all elected officials, appointed officials, and employed officials do know that all digital devices are under question if they don't have a, a succinct email, a email and contact. Everyone knows that. I want to make that, in fact, I'm hoping that Martha takes note of it, that it's very important that at any moment, whether it's your business computer, your text, your cell phone, or your personal laptop, if there's town business on that device, it's public knowledge. So I want to, the second question, and since that question wasn't really answered, I'm going to go, I, I need a, uh, to answer, ask a question to the town clerk. And the question is, can you please describe the process of producing the minutes of each meeting, uh, whether there's digital content, digital devices, and who approves what is put into the town record for the future of the town? That would be, the um, question is directed to, I believe, Julie Smith. I, uh, just I just, I write up the minutes and the select board approves it. We just approved them tonight from the last meeting. And I try but the to the minutes that are, let, let's, let's go back a little bit. The minutes that are on, the town website compared to the minutes recorded in town hall seem to have a disparity. Um, so that leads that, me to my- I think that the confusion is that the minutes of the meeting basically is to cover um, decisions and, and, and topics. They're not a verbatim um, uh, recollection of everything that was said during the meeting. It's basically to cover the high points and the decision process. The minutes don't okay, necessarily so have to include every aspect of what happens in the meeting, which is, is that what you're comparing it to with like the Orca media, media recordings? Well, I would recommend that every select board, planning and zoning board, um, board of civil authority members, um, watch work of media and listen to the recording and then compare it to what is then recorded by Julie in the town future record. So that leads me to another thing. I'm going to make a very serious recommendation that regarding the November 12th Board of Civil Authority meeting, uh, all members, uh, that would be, I believe, a name, Brenda Goopy, uh, Becky Klein, Mike Harvey, Frank Severy, June Hendricks, all review what has been recorded on Orca Media. Very simple to do. You just go there and you'll, you'll find it. And then compare it to the minutes that are recorded for the future of our town in the town office of Rochester. You're going to see disparity. There are serious, serious things that were brought up by Frank, by Dune, that were deleted. So I, I don't, I'm getting very, I said I had concerns during that meeting, and my concerns are even bigger because it's not about me, it's not about whatever. It's about what is, what will then be discovered by people that are researching the minutes that should be recorded that were not. Does that make sense? Take it under. I guess we'll uh, take it under advisement. Well, it's, it's pretty serious Thank because you. I believe that, um, I believe, and this is part of the recommendation, that all members of the Board of Civil Authority, names mentioned above, 
should review and take in the open meeting laws of Vermont and reflect onto what the way that meeting was um, uh, projected, the way the meeting was held. Um, it, it, it was pretty deplorable, to be honest. So I, 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 I would think I would suggest that every board of the town of Rochester take serious note to open meeting laws and etiquette and protocol. Very seriously. All right. Um, thank you for your your recommendation. Well, it's it's just it's just um, you know kind of just advice for people to understand. Um, there there are laws, open meeting laws, that you yep. can find yep. on the Secretary I, um, of State's office. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we're we're aware of them, and that that I'm pretty sure that we we've satisfied the requirements of those laws, and and this meeting and and that meeting also. Like I said, the um. The minutes are not uh, a verbatim um, retelling June, of, of the me. meeting. June, yeah. Do you have something average... specific that you're saying that there was a decision that was made that was not put in the minutes? Is there a specific example there is, you there, could there, is, there, is, there are serious points that were made during the Board of Civil Authority meeting on November 12th that were deleted from the minutes that have been recorded in town hall. I'm not going to go into what they are, but I think if you well, you said well, you if think it, okay, June, if June, you not, said you, if, you think you you said that quote you just said you think you're following open meeting laws. Every member needs to know they're following, and or K N O W, not think they're following. It's it's a right, liability. We'll take that under advisement. <laughs> You know, if you'd like to pick every word that we say and pick it apart, and it's, uh, it's not surprising it, it, uh, you, that you, you take issues with what go, happens at the meetings, Robert. You, no, you continue to go back to, we know that minutes don't include verbatim discussion and conversation. That, that's a, right. that's obvious right. to the most casual citizen of, uh, of the okay. town. Is but, there, is but, there a decision there, that was made that you think was deleted from the minutes? I would suggest that you watch Orca and then look at the minutes. If you can't uh, specify what it is, for. Robert, it makes it hard to take you seriously. But we appreciate your attention and concern, and and we'll you know take that under advisement. Right, that would be great. <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Yeah. I would like to uh, give a. A shout out, thank you to Richard Harvey for all of his municipal service to our town. Mm -hmm. He was on the select board, the planning commission for many years and uh, his passing will be missed. I did sure. not know that. Yeah, he passed yeah. a while. Yeah. Go. yeah, we had an obituary in the paper last week. All right. yeah. All right. um, well, yeah, thanks you for mm -hmm. bringing that up. Um, anybody else have anything to contribute tonight? If not, I'd make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Good a second. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Okay. Aye. Have a good evening, everybody, and happy birthday. Happy birthday, Patty, and you tomorrow. Okay.